you, you don't have to make, uh, bring in the time into this for Riemannian space, it could all be x, y, z and so on, Euclidean or Minkowski, but the, so if you take one of them like that, then this is the Riemannian geometry. So we have gone from Euclidean geometry to Minkowski geometry to Riemannian geometry, okay. And here, so this last step is the right one to describe gravity because it's a curved manifold. So very often you find in the books some statements like gravity is a manifestation of the curvature of space time. This precisely is uh, this last equation, last step, last relation for the value of ds square. This precisely tells us that that gravitation or gravitational force or whatever you like to call it, uh, gravitation is a manifestation of the curvature of space-time manifold. So as soon as you make A, B, C, D, etc. as fixed, constant, gra gravity would disappear, curved manifold would now become a flat manifold and there would be no gravity. Okay, so this was just for a very, very elementary illustration. We can, we can put it in a, uh, put it in a little more sophisticated form. So, like, If you like G mu nu or if you like eta mu nu as you like dx mu dx mu. Now this could be uh, and this let me say as fixed. Now, no gravity, here the, this is a flat space time manifold. And this is a curve is space time. Here, now I need not restrict it to be a diagonal. It's not necessary. You can have all kinds of things. You, have. you, you very often consider rotations of the rotational black holes or neutron stars or whatever, you automatically have some, some terms which are of diagonal terms. Okay, so uh, in general, this would be a, in a, in a four dimensional space, this, this would be a four by four matrix. So it will have 16 components. Okay, you can have all of them non-zero, you can have of diagonal to be zero as you like, you can simplify your life and therefore you have lots of mod, model kind of model building and so on. So with this we have fairly good idea, this is very important. So when we have this uh, g mu nu, which is a function of x mu, then actually this g mu nu itself becomes a field, okay, because it depends on x mu, right. Now, <clears throat> one more point we need to uh, recap in this context is apart from this, after we know this, we know classical field theory of gravity relatively better, right? With this clarification, we know the classical field theory of gravity at a better scale, okay? So now, one more point, which is, to, to my mind, is very crucial, and this has to do with the potential energy. Phi of x, this is 
minus gm by x is very very well known okay now what i want to show is supposing i want to plot it okay let me just make one dimensional phi of x minus gm by x so mod x could be plus one minus okay as usual now let us try to have a plot of this so let me let me let me have this edge in some units equal to 1 okay then i would also have somewhere minus 1 okay now here i would like to consider plot of phi of x just for illustration purposes here this is would be the definition of the potential potential energy phi at a point x generated by a mass m which is sitting at the origin so let let it sit here at the origin all right now put just g equals to 1 so what you have is minus m by mod x this would be uh, so this mod x for me is plus minus 1 and minus m now if you consider uh, if you consider i have taken it too far so i should have taken a smaller scale maybe One I have taken too far, maybe I should take a case model. So, uh, something like this would be joining. I am not interested in the real nature of this, okay, here. But I want to say, when I take n equals to 2, this line remains here, but it goes here. If I make n equals to 4, it goes twice of this height. If I make n equal to 100, this point goes far away. So what happens, what I want to, what I want to really tell is that, some mass m1 and So you can you can you can draw a supposing this is the event horizon. I I I'll just come back to this what it is. So the heavier the mass, the deeper the singularity. This is one point that I wanted to tell. The heavier the mass, the deeper the singularity. So supposing we consider our sun, for example, a protostar. And we consider a black hole sitting here, which is some millions times heavier than our uh, our sun. Then this I would be I would not be even able to depict it by any diagram. Okay, how deep it would go. So this is obviously a singularity. So I want to come back to the singularity idea of a singularity. Now, because we are going to encounter them, and So let me make some space here. And let me write this expression for the this is or let me call it small r. So this can tell me v square is 2gm by r or r equal to 
2 gm by e square. Now, uh, <coughs> here we want to pick up a very elementary idea from the school level that there is a mass m, it has some radius r, for example, earth, and we can calculate the escape velocity for earth. And this is something like 11.2 uh, kilometers per second. Okay. Now, I again do a simple thought experiment. I want to keep m to be fixed, but I want to reduce r. What will happen as I reduce r, keeping m fixed? That I will reach a limiting value where this is equals to c square or when this becomes equal to c square at that point so the velocity becomes comparable to the velocity of light let us say a little bit smaller than the velocity of light then this object of mass m would turn into a black hole right so and then this value of r would actually correspond to the so called Schwarzschild radius of the object. So for our earth, if I could keep the mass of the earth to be the same fixed and if I keep reducing the radius and I make it 8.4 millimeter, our earth would become a black hole. 